In our previous video, we did a discussion of some best practices with exception handling in Java. In this video, we're going to do some hands-on examples. So let's start with a simple one. I'm going to go to the program that we've been writing so far, which is the one called driver. And if you recall, we have a method where we are, oh, one second, please. We have a method where we are prompting the user for some kind of integer, and we're validating that the integer is within a given range. The problem is we're not validating that the user actually enters an integer. So in other words, if I run driver at the moment, and I put in garbage data for one of the integers, okay, enter gallons of gas, it will essentially crash the program. It will give us a Java line number format exception for string blah, blah, blah. Well, number format exception is one of these exceptions we call unchecked. In other words, we should prevent it from happening, but it could happen at any time. So I'm going to go into my driver program, and you see we already have this little while loop that validates that our number is within range. What we don't have is a try catch around here to validate that the user actually entered numerical data. So I'm going to split this line up into two different lines. The declaration line on 142 and the assignment line on line 143. Now what I'm going to do is use the try catch syntax we discussed in our last video. Try and then catch. Now in the catch we're going to have a parenthesis, and this is a lot like a parameter variable we see in the method above. Now what parameter can we use? Well essentially anything that extends from runtime exception. The most generic one is just exception, and we can certainly use that in this case, but we can be more specific if we want to as well and say number format exception. So in other words, this block will specifically handle only number format exceptions. Okay? Now if you take a look, my tabs are a bit off, so remember the shortcut in, in uh, NetBeans. Uh, Shift Alt F will uh, realign this, which will make them look a lot better. Okay, now you also might remember from my presentation I said bad things to do. I said never leave a catch block empty. That's what's happening here. Okay, now imagine what would happen so far. Int input is redlining right here on line 150 because it says this might not have been assigned, and that's true. We declared the variable up here, we're assigning it here. But remember, if something goes wrong, it's going to skip this line and everything that follows it and jump right to, right to the catch part. So it's possible if I entered garbage data that nothing was ever in this variable, and down here it gives me a red line to say, hey, this was never assigned. So what I might do is say int input equals zero. Okay, now I can save this, and the trick is if I leave the catch block empty as we see it right now, then watch what happens when I run the program. Enter gallons of gas. Now this one's a double, it's not an end, so I'm going to go ahead and put in valid data. Miles per gallon, I'm going to say 10, T-E-N, -T odometer 10,000. So maybe I'm a user who just thinks I should type in the, the word, not the actual numbers. Okay, do you want to create another vehicle? No, distance to travel 100. Okay, reimbursement rate per mile 44. Do you want to create another trip? No. Okay, now look at what happened. We got an arithmetic exception divided by zero because what happened is by having an empty catch block, we didn't actually handle the error. We just left int input assigned to zero. So that's, and, and then that caused a, that caused a program to keep running, but throw an exception later that we don't understand. So we shouldn't leave the catch block empty. Uh, we do always, at the very least, want to log. At this point, we haven't discussed logging yet, though, so I am going to break one rule and go ahead and put a system out print line and say invalid number. Okay, now what we could do is we could put together a loop, just like the while loop we put together down below, where we continue to loop until the user enters a valid number. So why don't we do that? We'll do an infinite loop while true. That looks a little bit funny, doesn't it? And then I'll close off the while loop down here. We see my tabs are off again, so Alt-Shift-F will fix those. 
So we see while true. Now remember, a test is going to continue to run while the condition in parentheses evaluates to true. So left as it is, this is essentially a, uh, an infinite loop that would run our program out of memory. So what we need to do is, when we get good data, we need to break out of the loop. Okay, now remember the trick with try-catch. If an exception happens, it's going to not execute the line where the exception happens or any other lines until it gets to the catch part. The catch part is only going to execute if there was an error. So watch this. I could say break, remember that trick, and if this line executes successfully, then we break out of the while loop here and we move on to the next loop, which is where we're validating the range of data. Okay, so what I might do then in the catch block is say J option pane, show message dialog, and just say you did not enter a valid number. Please try again. Okay and then terminate with a semicolon. Whoops. Okay, and I need to add the null argument. One more thing I'm going to need to do is I need to move this prompt inside of the loop. Uh, so let's see. Because I need to actually re-prompt each time we're asking for this information. Now the prompt could go here within the try, but it really doesn't have to. It just, to ha it just has to go within the while loop. That's all. Okay. And it looks like I have a dependency on this variable uh, down here in another loop. Remember scope of variable means a variable is alive from the point where it is declared until the close curly of the block where it is declared. So in other words, str input is only alive for the blue area that I'm showing here. Let me go back now and refactor this and we'll just declare it at a higher level so it has greater scope and then we'll assign it down here str input and like so equals j option pane show input dialog now we look a little bit better let's save and let's go ahead and run this okay and run okay gallons of gas 10 now miles per gallon ten you didn't enter a valid number please try again okay 10 you didn't enter a valid number, please try again. And you see I can keep entering garbage. And it's going to keep giving me this message until I actually enter a valid number. Odometer, 10,000. And again, until I enter actual numerical data, it's going to keep giving me that message. And there we go. Do you want to create another vehicle? No. Enter distance to travel, uh, 100. Uh, reimbursement rate per mile, 44 cents per mile. Do you want to create another trip? No. And we'll see that, sure enough, everything ran properly. Gallons of gas 10, odometer 10,000. Gallons of gas 0, because we're running 100 miles at 10 miles per gallon. And odometer 10,100. So that's a simple way to set up a try-catch to validate numeric data. In our next video, we'll see how we can rethrow this exception if a user is unable to enter a correct number maybe three times in a row. What we'll do in that case is we'll rethrow the exception up to the calling method, and then we'll essentially send a message to the user and then kill the program off. So we'll, we'll do that in the next video. I'll see you then.